We can say hello, we can say good morning, you can say what's up, it doesn't matter because <laughs> the eyes of the world are focused on Qatar right now. Yep. And yes, it's official, France will get the chance to defend their title after they overcame a spirited Morocco 2-0 last night. What a way to say good morning, Qatar. Good so we've got it, guys. We've got Argentina. We've got France. It's and a now, dream final. It, it's the one I think even most neutrals, yes, but even a few who had a bias going into this World Cup wanted to see this on some level. Incredible. Theo Hernandez turned from villain to absolute hero last night. And then mm. Randall Kolomouani added the second around 80 minutes to see the defending champions through to the final. Yep. Fifth yep. In, in seven attempts. And no, that's absolutely insane to think of uh, above 50% in terms of success rate at World Cups. <laughs> My goodness. And if they were to defend it this time around, what a story that would be. But for me, the, the biggest story would be Lionel Messi lifting the World Cup uh, at what is possibly his last shot at it. That would certainly end the GOAT discussion Cement him yeah. as the greatest footballer of, of all, all time. time. And no one will ever, ever replace him. And when it comes to respect earned, wow, well, despite the result, Moroccan fans, you've earned my respect. They were on unbelievable form, did not stop, stop supporting their team throughout. In fact, that sound yeah. was uh, deafening. Just take a listen and a look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. The Atlas Lions, eh? That's amazing. And obviously, that's the kind of spirit you want to see, you know, kind of win Ooh. or lose, carry the team on your shoulders. You're the 12th man on that field and they need that support. And when you have that, you stand every chance to win and, the game. And, well done to the fans. And when Sace went off, I mean, they played with an injured player. They went in as a wounded beast going into it. So I don't think any of us knew the mental challenge that <laughs> that team was going through. Yeah. Some 60,000 Moroccan fans got into that stadium when they started going with those whistles. Incredible stuff. Unbelievable. Um, whereas for France, of course, they had reason to celebrate with their fans after that final whistle, and they did. <laughs> Was that, that little section there of French supporters? The rest of the stadium was 100, 100 French Morocco. supporters in the stadium. Yeah, absolutely stunning scenes over there for the defending champions. Who could have, by the looks of things when I saw the highlights, could have literally run away with that game. If you look at the chances that Giroud missed out on as well. So, you know, they, they are fully deserving of that spot in the, in the final. And, and they got put to the test here yeah, yeah. against the stiffest. Uh, you know, let's talk about um, Sofain. Amrabat, okay. Yes, you were telling me about him. It was his job to mark Mbappe, and it was everyone's him and four job. Other defenders. Yeah, everyone was uh, marking Mbappe, and he took it on the chin. I must say, when your laces are being ripped off your boots, you know you are a marked man. <laughs> um, but 51 recoveries in this tournament. That's the most ever in the history of a World Cup. This man is going to get bought by some big team. I have no yeah. doubt. But the Moroccans. Incredible, man. You've done us proud. Represented Africa very proudly once again. Now, of course, that semi-final was staged at the Al Bayat Stadium and marked the final match at the venue for this year's World Cup. And then, on November the 20th, this venue witnessed Qatar and Ecuador play this FIFA World Cup's first match wow. after an astonishing opening ceremony. Look at the visuals, of course, if you can take your mind all the way back to that. Now, the stadium takes its name from Bayat Al Shaer, Al tents historically used by the nomadic peoples of Qatar and the Gulf region. So it's got some uh, you know, significance in terms of its representation. Yeah, for, um, the, people for the people of people. Qatar yes, exactly. as well. We often forget about the impact on the culture and the locals when something like this happens. And that design honors Qatar's past and its present as well, while keeping one eye on the future of the community. Yeah. So the stadium covers an area larger than 30 football fields, in fact. <laughs> hosted wow. matches between Germany and Spain, England and Senegal, as well as the quarterfinal, of course, between France and England during the tournament. So um, it's got some austere, Look at that. man. Look oh, at that. Wow. Stunning, stunning stuff. Taking me back to 2010 as well. Uh, speaking of South Africa, 2010, yeah. <laughs> here's some great news. <laughs> South African referee uh, Victor Gomez uh, earned an astonishing 1.43 million what? rand, around the, uh, that amount, in his time during the 2022 Woo. FIFA World Cup, according to online publication Itdiski Times. Uh, I say, yes, man. Yeah, Secure that way. bag. What a Secure way to that sound, bag. Sound out your career. 
Wowza! He might have earned more from that match than Anton Griezmann, in fact. <laughs> at, at least he wasn't sent home after 15 yellow cards, right? <laughs> but uh, match officials received a basic fee of some 70,000 US dollars from FIFA for their participation at football's biggest showpiece. Incredible. And uh, in, in addition to that, each match day referee also gets another $3,000 per game in the group stages, while that amount rises to then $10,000 in the knockout stages. And then the exchange rate does the rest. <laughs> Boom, that's there. Um, so, of course, most notably for Gomez, um, who is now set to retire from uh, refereeing on his return from Qatar, he officiated the group stage between uh, France and Australia and Spain against Japan. He was also the fourth official in the quarterfinal between the Netherlands and Argentina. So I think personally he's ticked, I'm sure, a few massive milestones through this process. But, sir, we tip our hats to you. You can buy us all lunch when you return to <laughs> South Africa. Um, but to the rest of this amazing team, saying good morning, Qatar. Enjoy the build-up to the final. Enjoy your Pride Day tomorrow. We love you. We love the World Cup. We love Let football. Let us know your predictions for the final. Come on. Come on. Who you got? Who uh, you it's got? It's got to be Argentina all the way. Yeah? World. Messi's got to hold that World Cup. He's got to I think it, it's, it's the story that everyone needs. Can you imagine the headlines? But, okay, score, though. What's going to be the score? Are we going, are we going to I see 2-1. As you said it, I see 2-1. I don't think we're going to go to extra time. 2-1. Do you know why, I think? Because for this French team, it doesn't matter as much as it does to this Argentinian team. And I don't mean that in a, in a kind of cliched, throwaway kind of way. Mbappe, he's going to be fine if he loses this World Cup. <laughs> Lionel Messi, not so much. And I think his team is going to do it for him. But you can let us know your predictions. And we'd love to hear from you on all of our social media platforms. Who's going to take this World Cup, baby?